In this live self-defense training video, you're gonna learn how to use a walking stick or a hiking staff for self-defense. This is the Martial Arts Joe, which is 54 inches. This is the walking stick that I use when I go hiking. We're planning a trip later this summer. This is the one that I will carry on the trail to protect myself and my family. Now, using it as a walking stick, there's some ways to get it immediately into the self-defense fight. The first is just a thrust with your hand. You're already carrying it this way. It's between you and the threat. You can pick it up and stick it right into the soft tissue of the face, into the throat, into the solar plexus for self-defense, and it's very effective that way. Also, it makes it harder for them to grab that short end. I'm gonna roll the bag in so you can see a little bit. We'll make them taller. There we go. From here, it's just a simple thrust, and it might not be the most powerful strike, but it's very effective because this hard piece of hickory is gonna smash his nose, his teeth down his throat, into his throat for self-defense. Uh, hello, Garen, it's good to see you. So that's the very first motion. The opening motion for self-defense with your hiking stick or your walking staff is just a simple thrust. Hello, Alita. Hello, Patrick. Now, from this position, you can also punch and then turn your hand so that it comes across the side of the head. Hello, Matthew. Hello, Doug. Old Tuply is here. You're pushing this way, and then you're turning your thumb down. It's almost like a traditional boxing punch. W9UFO, good to see you. You're coming over like this. That takes the long side of the stick and puts it up alongside his head, his neck, his arm, all for self defense. Hello, Studer, good to see you. Studer, we're using our Japanese Joe or our hiking stick for self defense. Now, from this position, I can also bring it up to my ear like you're answering your phone, and then you can simply thrust. Morty, one, it's good to see you. Bring it up here stepping in and thrusting. And this is a very strong strike because you have two hands on it and you can easily push through his face, his nose, his teeth, his mouth, his throat. The idea, hello Beverly, is to bring it up quickly, explosively, get it into a position where you can defend yourself. You have the stick between you and your threat, your hiking stick, your trekking pole, and it's longer than most blades, right? dramatically longer. So that gives you reach advantage. They might have something like this. You'll have something like this. You can keep them far away from you with two hands on it. You can bring that up very quickly between the legs. You can say, hey, back up. You're getting too close. Just lifting that up fast, smashing between his, his groin, maybe coming up under the chin. Maybe he's reaching. Maybe that blade is coming at you and you're going to smash it. GR Beck from UK, good to see you. Bringing that up, smashing knocking his hand out of the way, then you grab it with your other hand and stick it right through his teeth for self-defense or in through the throat or into the eyes or into the solar plexus, down into the groin. Maybe it's a vicious animal. You're walking the trail, something comes up. You can bring that strike in there quickly. You can also just push this way. You can do the sweeping motion, taking out a knee for self-defense or into that vicious animal's face all for self-defense. So very basic, simple. There are a lot of fancy things that you can do with a Joe martial arts staff. A lot of great ways that you can use it, spinning it from hand to hand. You can get into all of the traditional styles of moving with the Joe staff, but you don't need that. That's fun in the dojo or the dojong. That's fun for the demonstrations. That's fun to challenge your brain so that you can learn different ways to use it, but when we're talking self-defense, I want a simple thrust or a basic swinging strike, a lifting strike, two-handed thrust. You can bring the front hand back and bring this across here, almost like you're chopping into his neck, striking him right in the temple, neck, arm, shoulder, wrist, elbow, wherever you can strike for self-defense. And so from this position, pulling back, bringing it in here, you can change hands, striking on the other side. To do that, simply slide one hand past the other. That's good practice. You can do that over and over until it becomes familiar. You can do it in a short amount of your staff on the bottom here, or you can do the whole staff. But the point is, don't get lost in fancy techniques when a simple technique is gonna keep you safe. Fancy techniques, a lot of time, are going to take too long takes too long to get proficient with them, and the likelihood of success on a really fancy technique goes down because the person 
is moving in an unpredictable way. You don't know where they're going, but if he's coming straight into you to either hit you or grab you or stab you, you can stick that right in his face and immediately stop them. Brooklyn A. Brooklyn House says, would you use the same strikes with a short stick? And I'm thinking you're thinking probably like a 36 inch Joe or a Hanbo. And the answer is yes. There's also the Tanbo, which is generally 18 inches. This one's 12 because I like to train with all size sticks. Um, yeah, Billy Johnson says he's late. Thanks for being here. Uh, W9 UFO says, yeah, a lot of the techniques do require this longer staff, but most of the ones we've done so far, and I was just trying not to leave the camera, but come with me. I'm gonna bring you to the stick corner. And we'll get, we'll get the Hanbo. So since we're talking about it, and, and they are all similar, you can do all these techniques. There are advantages to, to everyone, and not disadvantages, but differences. So this is the size difference. This is the Joe. This is the Hanbo. The bow comes up to here, and then this would be a Tanbo. And then you also have um, the medium size, shorter sticks, like a 28-inch Collie stick or a Screamo Arnis. You can use them. WNIFU says, wow, nice collection. I have, I left in Ohio before we moved to Florida, I left 10 times that amount, so many varieties, every imaginable thing you can imagine that you can hit somebody with that's a stick, I left in Ohio. And I missed them dearly. I only brought like three things with me. I brought a Joe, I brought a Hanbo, and I brought a bow. And everything else I've kind of reaccumulated since then. But I wanted to show you, we're gonna put the, the Joe staff just to the side, if you were using the shorter stick, you could bend the knees and then bring this up fast. You can bring that through here, answer your phone, strike, bring that through, striking against the head, down on top, switching hands up into the stomach, up under the groin, bringing the back hand up this way. You can bring it through here, you can block with it. Two hands thrusting through the face, boxing the ears, bending the knees, jamming through, all with the Hanbo, and then the Tanbo, the shortest one, you have these basic striking motions down on top, swinging through, coming up, up under the groin, down on top, coming from the opposite side, two hands, smashing through here, two hands in here, and then, of course, where we started, the 54 inch, and you can have 50 inch. Don't worry about how long or how short your, your stick is. Oh, and thank you for that, that super chat, that super sticker. I really, really appreciate that. But all of them have an advantage over a blade, even if it's not as big of an advantage. You still have reach advantage. You can still hit him before he can hit you with one of these. Now, having said that, I would like to be behind the longest uh, version that I have. And uh, you could have the bow, which is gonna be six feet, for most people, but if you even have a Joe, I, and I like this, this size better than the bow for hiking. On the trail, I used to hike a lot when I was younger, between the time I was in the military and when I was teaching a lot of martial arts and single, I spent a lot of time hiking or rucking, as we call it in the military, either in training or just for fun, and I always carried a stick. And the stick was for security, uh, you know, safety for myself, in case I ran into another person who meant me harm, especially when you try hike some longer trails, every once in a while you get some weirdos out there, or uh, for animals. You know, it's big. It's a good tool to have, good option to have for animals. So this basic technique coming through here, I also wanted to show you if you turn your hand so that your palm is up, now you have what's called a split grip. From this position, you can strike one side, or the other side, this is very powerful. You have these pushing strikes, and think just about sticking that right into his nose or to his teeth, breaking his teeth down his throat for self-defense, smashing him in the face, pushing him off of you, uh, especially like if you're off the ground. This is also a great tool if you do get knocked to the ground. You can use this if you have a hard time getting up. Maybe you're a little bit dazed, having an extra point of contact on the ground helps get up a little bit faster, a little bit more secure, and then you get it right back into the fight for self-defense. If you wanted to warm up before you train, and of course you're not gonna warm up. Uh, Billy just said um, he was in the Army. Billy, I was in the uh, Marine Corps and then I was in the Army National Guard 
After 9-11, I went back in. When the recruiter told me I was too fat and old to be a Marine anymore, and he was right, <laughs> he said, go join the National Guard, and I had a lot of fun in the Army National Guard. Now I had a, a vision for a while. I was going to go do the Air National Guard next, and then I thought I might do the Coast Guard. Never thought I'd do the Navy. Any of you who are Marines or Navy, you understand the relationship and why that's funny or not funny. But you're going, the Marine Corps is part of the Navy, so it kind of one size fits all. But you're going to one size or one side to the other side. This is just a good way to build some power in your hands, get used to the feel. This is the warm up. I used to start with a warm up, but now I show you kind of in the middle because I like to get right into. Yeah, W9 UFO says Navy here. He understands the animosity, the love hate relationship between Marines and Navy. And, I'm, and I've outgrown it. I don't care. I, I appreciate everybody who served their country, and I have a great admiration for the Navy and all the different jobs that the Navy does, which is amazing, it, especially protecting our country, especially in times like this. All right, so we had pushing, we have lifting, we have turning. I also um, want to show you that you can use this almost like a sword or a spear. So you have these thrusting motions, get behind it. If you put it in your front hand and the threat comes up to you on the trail or you're walking down your, in your neighborhood, that's the threat. I point my thumb at the threat. Now I can, almost like a pull cue, and I know you'd hold it like this, but almost like you're pushing this through. You can see that gets it closer, that gets it faster. The front hand, it drives it in the direction you want it to go. The back hand is the engine. Back hand's pushing it. You want to turn your shoulders and hips into every strike to get maximum power. If you take a little step, you can see in the mirror with that front foot as you come in, thrusting through. From this position, you can pull your shoulder, striking at an angle. You can bring it to the top of your head, striking down. Another way to accelerate those strikes is to pull your hand back and then push. You're pushing as your hand is sliding against your staff. Your hands never come together. It's not a baseball bat. If you come together, you pivot through. Now you're open. You're going to get hit. On this style, you're always going to leave the stick between you and the threat. So bring it here and stop it. And then you can do the thrusting strike. You can change your hand position. This is all that's happening here. It's sliding down the back. The back hand slides over. Now you're still in that alternating grip, but on the other side, it just looks like that. You can either do it on the back or you can do it here. doesn't matter. Changing positions allows you now to have a different type of strike. Slide it, bring it down on top, and there you see again you're pushing. As you bring your strike down, you're pushing, creating energy, more force, hitting with more force. If you can knock him out for self-defense, you don't have to worry about his knife or any other weapon he might have. Maybe there's multiple attackers. You've got to get rid of them as fast as possible and you're bringing it down from here or to the side, from the other side, all, again, sliding your hand as you push. And you're, anytime you're using a stick weapon, there's, it's a pulling motion. And the reason it's a pulling motion is that you don't want to break your stick. If you're bringing it down straight down, all the force goes right here, and it's going to break right there. If you're bringing it down in a sliding motion, you're going to distribute the force, and it's not likely to break your stick. As you bring it through your hiking staff, your walking stick for self-defense. And so the back hand is pulling, and then because your arm is attached to your shoulder, you're creating an arcing striking motion. So it's a slice instead of a chop. So a chop comes straight down where a slice comes through. And that you accomplish that by pulling which, with whichever hand is in the back. So with a stick, because there's no front and back, there's no uh, blade and non-blade, like you would on a sword or a spear, you're pulling through with whichever hand is in the back. So sometimes your left hand is behind, sometimes your right hand is the one pulling. Now the front hand is just directing the strike where you want it to go. And you should practice all these different angles when you do practice taking out a knee, take getting into the ribs, smashing the wrist, smashing the head, coming into the clavicle, and then, and it's better if you do it outside because there's no ceiling to put a hole in, and then you bring it into the other hand and you practice the same angles of striking. 
Great way to practice. But again, the way to get into that position is you have it in front of you. When you had it behind you, you push it in or you strike with that turn. You answer your phone and smash them through the teeth for self-defense. When it's in your front hand, you're standing behind it like Gandalf the Great. I think that's his name. It's been a long time since I read that book. And you point the thumb and then push. Point the thumb, lift, and chop. Point the thumb, lift. This is a blocking motion. From here, this can come straight up. See how that's, you're under it now. He tries to hit your head. That intercepts it. You can turn and bring that strike down on top and push. Now, if he were to grab the other end of your stick and your hands were out in space, away from your body, it's gonna be a tug of war, and if he's stronger, you're gonna lose. If he goes to grab the end of your staff, you wanna lock it to your hip as soon as you can, and then he's gonna be pulling against your body weight. So the way to keep it from coming out of your hands is lock it to your hip and keep him from pulling against your body weight. Make a turning motion with the front end by turning your hips away and then push straight down. His hands will go like this and then oh, down like this. You stick that right in his clavicle through his throat for self-defense. Fights over, you win. Those are simple ways that you can use your self-defense walking stick or how to use a walking stick for self-defense. You guys have been awesome. Again, thanks for that. Thanks for all your comments. Please put a lot of comments in the comment section so that we can grow this channel and these videos. You guys have been awesome. If you want one of these shirts, they sent me a free one. It's, uh, it's the premium tee. It's really nice. It's, it fits well. It fits well. It looks pretty. Anyway, there's a link below. And if you need a self-defense walking stick, check the links below. You guys are awesome. I'll see you on the next one. Thank you.